Hi, everyone. My name is Alejandra Jorbat. Thank you so much for joining me today. Uh, I'm bringing you the function filter this time. I hope you find it useful. Uh, it's one of my favorite functions in Excel, very close to XLOOKUP. Really, I love XLOOKUP just a little bit more, but filter is quite close. So let me start showing you what I have here. Uh, first of all, I have this range of information with uh, uh, column for store, province, city, 2022, 2021, and 20. This, let's pretend, are sales. And my information goes up to line uh, row 36. In total, I have 33 stores. Uh, the first thing that I want to do, oh, first thing, uh, function filter is available in Microsoft 365 for um, PC and Mac, also uh, Excel for the web and Excel 2021. We're going to be using a function unique and sort, and those functions are also available there. Without further ado, let me start showing you what to do to identify the unique series that I have on this list. I don't want duplicates. I'm going to Let's say remove duplicate somehow. So I'm going to go here to W1. I'm going to say equal, unique. The array that is asking me here is the content of this um, column CD. I'm going to select that. I'm going to close parentheses. And I'm going to press Control backspace to go back to my active cell. And I'm going to press Enter. So here I'm going to scroll to my right. Here we have the unique series that I have in that column. Next thing that I'm going to do after the equal, I'm going to say sort. I want to sort this in ascending order. It's asking me for an array. The array is the result of my function unique. I'm going to close parentheses. The default for uh, sort is ascending is what I want. And now I have my information sorted in ascending order. Next thing that I'm going to do, I want to add, I want to convert this into a table. And I do this because any additional information that I need to uh, copy, let's say, at the bottom of this range will be added to the table and the function that is referring to this source of data will be updated as well. So let me press Control T and it's saying that my table has headers. Yes, that's correct. That is the store, province, city, etc. I'm going to say, okay, you can also press Control L and it will be, it will give you exactly the same information. Excellent. Once we are here, now, I want to create a data validation here. I want to add a data validation on cell J1 because I want that this information be filtered by a specific city. So I want to be able to just select that city from a list of the available cities. I'm going to go to data. I'm going to go to data tools here. And I'm going to select this little icon and I'm going to select data validation. Once I'm there, I need to allow a list. I have a list already. So I'm going to go to source and the source is going to be only the first cell where my formula uh, sort and unique are combined. That cell, I'm going to bring that and I'm going to add a hashtag at the end because this means that this is the result of a dynamic array function. And, and yes, it is. So I'm going to say, okay. And I don't select the result. I don't select the list because if the list changes, if the list growth, then I want to make sure that I capture that growth. Now I'm going to go to my cell J1. I, I can see now that I have an arrow. I'm going to select there to see the list that is available there. And now I can see I have all the series that I have on my uh, column W. Let's say I'm going to change this red there and I'm going to say uh, Leduc instead. Enter. Now you can see that Leduc is added to this list. Same thing with my data validation. Here I have Leduc available as well. Let me undo what I did, Control Z to undo. So I don't have Leduc anymore. Same thing with my data validation. I don't have Leduc anymore. Okay, perfect. So now that we have that preparation, let's start on cell I4 and I'm going to say equal filter. This is fantastic. Honestly, with these dynamic arrays, it's just fantastic to have all these wonderful things available. So filter, the array, the array will be the content of my table starting from um, below the, the headers, right? Down the headers. I'm going to select that line, the first line, which is in row four here. Control shift down to select the content all the way down up to row 36, which uh, is store 33. Uh, control backspace to get back to my active cell. I'm going to press comma 
What do I want that this includes? Well, what I want that this filter includes, I want to select all the content from my column D, just down, down below the header. I want that. Uh, control backspace to get back to my active cell. And then I want that this is equal to the city that I'm going to be selecting on my cell J1. I'm going to close parenthesis and I'm going to press enter. And it's bringing me an error, calculation error. Uh, let me make this a little bit bigger here. And what the problem is, is because this is empty. As soon as I have some information there, then this brings that information and the error goes away. Well, the fantastic, or one of the great things about this function, I'm going to double click there to edit, is that I have um, an optional parameter at the end. And I know it's optional because it's inside of uh, square brackets. And it says, if empty, well, if my criteria is empty, then bring me nothing. You can bring a text, you can bring a number. In my case, I'm going to bring empty. And I'm going to press enter. And now works. But let me show you. If I delete Burnaby and whatever is there, then I don't have the error anymore. The function is still there, you can see, but it's not bringing me the error. So first thing, right? So I don't need to use the two functions anymore that when I have errors like this, if error, then bring me empty. No, now it's included in the function as optional parameter right here. Okay, perfect. Now that I have that, let's say I'm going to bring Edmonton. Let's say that now I want to bring Edmonton, but also I want to bring the sales that are in 2022 greater or equal to 100,000. So I'm going to go back to my cell. Oh, remember, dynamic arrays. You can see that that dynamic, dynamic array is spilling all the way over here. You can see a very light blue rectangle. That is where this function is spilling the information to, right? So even I'm going to go to view. And I'm going to remove the grid lines. So now it's more obvious where that rectangle is, is all over, up to which column and which row, right? Uh, and this the formula lives here. If I go to any other cell, if I double click, there is nothing there. And if I go to the formula bar, I cannot modify the formula there. I need to go to I4 to identify where that function is living, right? So now that I have that, let's say, Remember that if you type anything here, you will get an error because it doesn't have room to spill the result. Okay. That error goes away when I delete that part. Perfect. Now that I have that, I want here to have two criteria. So after my comma, I'm going to, my first comma, I'm going to give a few spaces. I'm going to connect two criteria. For that reason, I need to put inside of parentheses, my first criteria. If you don't put the parentheses, you are going to get an error, okay? And from there, I'm going to say, I'm going to provide the asterisk. The asterisk is indicating to this formula that is one criteria and another criteria. It needs to meet both. So I'm going to open parentheses for the second criteria, and I'm going to say that the 2022 sales, I'm going to select all that column, and I'm going to say that one must be greater or equal to $100,000. Close parenthesis, and I think that's it. Yeah, perfect. Now I have this information filtered only for those items that are over, equal or over $100,000. But I don't want to go to the formula and be changing this hard-coded number. What I want instead, I'm going to delete that. I'm going to point up to L, uh, to L1. I'm going to press Enter. And because it has nothing, it has zero, really, then it's going to bring me everything that meets both criteria, Edmonton and any amount. And now that I say $100,000, now it's filtered by that information. So excellent. Now let's say that I want one or another. I want Edmonton or I want the sale that I greater or equal to $100,000. So I'm going to double click again to my cell like before. And uh, instead of providing the asterisk, what I'm going to provide is the a plus sign that is going to tell the formula is one criteria or another. I'm going to press enter and now it's going to bring me everything else it can be Edmonton or it can be anything that is over $100,000. For that reason, this one is lower than $100,000, but it's Edmonton, so it's meeting one of the two criteria. Same with this one that is Edmonton $87,000. Okay, well, 
Uh, let's say, let's bring, there, oh, actually, let me change this one. Instead of $100,000, let's say $115. Perfect. Now we have a smaller range. And uh, let me change this. Let me go home and let me center. So it looks much better. Now, what happens when I have this as a result? And let's say, mm, you know what? I don't want to bring all the columns. Let's say I just want to bring the store, the city, and I just want to bring 2022 and 2020. I don't want to bring 2021. I don't want to bring this, the province. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to expand this. I already <laughs> I'm prepared. So here is the result, right? Here is the criteria. It can be one or another. Now, if I go here to cell Q4, I want to filter the, the filtered result. So I'm going to say equal, filter, uh, the array. The array will be the result of this, this other array. If I select everything, you can see that Excel recognizes that this is another array. So it gives the hashtag at, uh, at the end, comma. What does this must include? And for that, I want to open uh, curly brackets because now I'm going to select the column, which columns I want to bring. I want to bring column one uh, or the first column. I don't want to bring the second one. I want to bring the, the third and the fourth. I don't want to bring the fifth and I want to bring the sixth. So in this case, I'm going to say yes to the first one. So one to the first one, no to the second one, zero to the second one. Yes to the third, so a one. So by saying yes or true, I'm going to provide a one. To say a false or not, I'm going to provide a zero. So I'm going to say the first one, yes, is a store, comma. Province, no, I don't want that, zero. City, one, I want that, comma. 2022, I also want to bring that, comma. 2021, I don't want that, so I'm going to provide zero, comma. And the last one is 2020. Yes, bring that one, please. One Close the curly bracket. I'm going to say close the parenthesis and I'm going to say enter. And now we have that information filter as well. I can also sort this information, let's say, for by column 2022. I'm going to say equal sort. And I want to sort by the index, comma. I'm going to use an index. So for default, it will sort for the first column. But in my case, I want to sort by uh, column 2022. So that will be one, two, three, my third column, three. And I can now close parentheses. Uh, ascending order is correct. And let me just change the formatting. Here. Perfect. Now that I have that, uh, let's say it was sorted ascending. I said, no, I want it descending instead. Well, then I can go to the next uh, parameter for the sort function, and I'm going to say minus one for descending, and now it works as descending. Excellent. I hope you found this information useful and you like it. Please give a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Also, share with anybody that you believe can benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.